Thank you so much. <clears throat> and now, Mr. Courtney from Connecticut. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman, and to both chairs and ranking members for holding this hearing. This really, the, the topic here today should shock the conscience of every American. And what I want to just thank all the witnesses is just that, you know, you've put forth some really, you know, manageable, doable uh, solutions that, uh, again, based on your testimony, I think should encourage us all that uh, we actually have the tools to address this. So, again, thank you all for, for being here um, today. Um, and also that, you know, these two subcommittees, I think, really, um, you know, also are positioned to move forward on these issues. Um, uh, um, Ms. Stewart, you, you mentioned, uh, and I think Dr. Perry also in your testimony alluded to the fact that the ACA, when it passed, uh, obviously moved the ball forward in terms of maternity care, Medicaid coverage, uh, and also the essential health benefits. But I do think, as, as Ms. Stewart's testimony indicated, I think it would surprise people to know that the age 26 coverage, which is hands down, uh, probably the most, one of the most popular, if not the most popular provision of the law, um, does not extend to dependent adult children in terms of uh, maternity uh, benefits. The numbers um, uh, we, we have is that it's about 4.2 million women ages 19 to 25 that are covered under their parents' uh, health insurance plans, uh, again, are, have that gap. And Mercer, um, which is pretty credible, institution or uh, think tank study found that approximately 70% of employers don't cover maternity care uh, for dependents. So again, this is the subcommittee that actually wrote the age 26 uh, provision because we have ERISA jurisdiction. Again, I wonder, Ms. Stewart, you could just sort of talk a little bit about how that's maybe contributing to this issue, that gap. You no, know, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think you're right in that um, it is certainly one of the most popular provisions in the AC ACA that health plans um, offer dependent coverage for children up to the age of 26. And um, the inclusion of an essential health benefits as a part of ACA has also been a huge benefit to, um, to pregnant women um, for maternity coverage. Um, what we know, though, is that the essential health benefits only apply in the individual and small group market. So these health plans for these large employers um, who are not required to provide coverage for maternity care for dependents leaves this large gap and this large loophole. About four million um, young women who are covered as, de uh, as dependents but don't have access to, to this kind of coverage. So we think that it's very important to deal with this loophole that potentially puts a lot of women at risk. Um, it subjects them potentially to a lot of out-of-pocket costs if they become pregnant. Um, and certainly this gap in coverage is actually threatening their own health and potentially the health of their baby if they're not able to receive the proper prenatal coverage and the kind of care that they may need. So addressing this loophole will be very important, and it's, again, millions of women that are left in this, um, in this gap. Dr. Perry, I don't know if you'd like to comment as well. As a person who has a 26-year-old daughter, I was super depressed when she had to get all my insurance. So I appreciate that that um, exists and I, that it's popular. And you think about who gets pregnant. It's 21 to 26-year-olds, and we're leaving off millions by not having this loophole addressed. So it's important for us to recognize if mortality is something we care about and morbidity and, and parenting and mothering, then we would not leave a space where people don't have access to care. Well, thank you. I have a 25-year-old, so uh, we're holding on my, our fingernails. The, um, uh, again, uh, Ms. Wilson, I just want to, again, uh, thank you for bringing up the, uh, the issue of the Ever Ensuring Lasting Smiles Act and the impact of um, that sort of fragile coverage for congenital birth defects. Um, I, I have a letter which I'd asked to be admitted to the record from Caleb Andrew Locke, who's a 10-year-old just passionate advocate who represents Rhode Island and Connecticut um, and describes his own situation, which, as he points out, if it was caused by a car accident, it would be covered, but the fact that it's a congenital defect um, runs into this uh, uh, obstacle, which is just completely unacceptable. So uh, again, thank you for, for addressing that issue, and hopefully that, that bill will uh, move forward because of the spotlight you're putting on it here today. And with that, I yield back. So order. <clears throat>